Okay, so we're going to be hopping into our database to show some of these ways of broadening and narrowing our search. So first, to do that, we need to get into the library stuff. So uh, there's a couple different options that you can do here. We can do library.clark.edu. Uh, that is by far probably the easiest. Um, or we also can go from our MyClark. So if you go from your MyClark, you're scrolling down until you see academic resources, and then you'll click on library from there. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to click on databases, and then we're going to take a look at a database called CINAHL. So we're in the databases list and then we're going to click on CINAHL and then we will get started with our search. Kind of going to work off of this PowerPoint that gets utilized in some of the classes here on campus. So one of the kind of main ways that you can broaden your search, or in this case kind of level up your search, is using Boolean operators. Those are and, or, and not. Kind of how that tends to then look is when plugging it into a database, you're going to be kind of combining those things. You could really utilize the Boolean operators through really any database. So, so in this case it kind of follows along to the PowerPoint slide in that we're using CINAHL. Uh, CINAHL is a nursing database, uh, really great for kind of health sciences and nursing and kind of anything like related to medicine. We're going to kind of apply this. So if in the case that we were doing research and we were wanting to find things related to, um, you know, maybe like infection, say that we're really interested in what that looks like in conjunction to hand washing. So essentially what we're going to do is we're taking our kind of two topics um, that are very much related to each other and kind of looking at that relation. So the Boolean operator of AND works fantastic for this. And essentially what we're going to do is plugging those in, we're telling the database to not only find journal articles about infection but also hand washing. So essentially it's just tying like the and just kind of ties the ties the two together. Um, so infection and hand washing. Um, and one of the best things about a lot of the databases is that this kind of Boolean operator, the and is going to be kind of your default. So you wouldn't have to kind of really change anything at all. It's only when you utilize any of the others. So We'll let it do its search. And then what you kind of have going on is all of the articles that um, talk about both are going to be the ones that show up. So in a way, this does kind of filter your results, you know, in the way of making it more narrow, giving you less things to look at because what it is pulling up in the search results is things that kind of accomplish both of those things. So if you were interested interested in these two concepts being tied together, this is the best kind of route for that. Next, what we're going to kind of do is we're going to look at what happens if we change it. So instead of it being infection and hand washing, we're going to change it to or. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about what that looks like. So up at the top of the screen, you're going to click where it says and, and it's going to give you that option of and, or, or not. We're going to choose or. Then you would resume the search. And you can kind of like between how you're changing it, so which Boolean operator that you're using, you can kind of look to see what the number kind of changes to. So in um, in the and, you know, your number is going to be smaller because it's tying the two things together. So any article that is not discussing both is not going to show up. In this case, it's kind of like broadening. So I say it really fits very much like within this video, this idea of broadening. So this is pulling back anything about infection as well as anything about hand washing. So it doesn't tie them together. It therefore like separates them, thus increasing your search results. So in this case, we're looking at like over 500,000, but still an option, still an option of a way that you can kind of look to see what might happen with your results. 
Um, and then finally, we're going to kind of include the not. So not is probably the like least used one. So we're going to change this back again. So we'll do infection and hand washing. Click on that bottom one, not masks. In this case, what we're doing is yet again, we're tying infection and hand washing together. So the articles coming back need to have both infection and hand washing. Um, let's say in some cases as you're searching what may end up happening is you may have particular articles showing up discussing you know in this case masks or like face coverings. Maybe you're not interested in that. Maybe your research does not you know discuss that. So you're really just wanting to stick to the infection and hand washing. The knot essentially is going to kind of help to narrow things out. So thus resuming the search again and you can see we're now down to like 7,800. This is just kind of a few of the different ways that you might broaden or even in some cases kind of narrow your search. So and is obviously going to give you, you know, some really fantastic things. Uh, but it has to talk about both or is going to increase your search results and that may or may not be helpful. We're going to talk about truncation and we're going to talk about quote marks. Those are a couple other ways that you might broaden or kind of narrow your search. Okay, so perfect example of this is kind of with the word child. So if you were to do a search and you just did child, um, so just child on its own, you're going to get like a million, so like 1.5 um, million, a little more than that, um, because essentially what is happening, and we can kind of see this as we look through our search results, is you see things where it's highlighting children, it's highlighting children's like with an apostrophe, um, it's highlighting in like the subjects where any mention of child, um, so like parent-child relations, child psychosocial factors, so really any time that child is being mentioned at all. And, you know, starting out like that could be a really helpful thing to have if you're wanting to see what's out there. But, you know, looking at over a million um, results, like that's a lot of things just to sift through. So at the end of the day, it could be not as helpful. So uh, the truncation part of this can be really helpful. Um, so we're now going to put an asterisk at the end. So you're going to do child with an asterisk. And we'll see kind of how this affects our search results. So we went from 1.5, so more or less kind of the same, maybe even a little bit more. We're still at the 1.5, and you can kind of see all the spots where it's kind of connecting things um, even more. So childhood, um, parent-child relations, child psychosocial factors, adverse childhood experiences, um, and then even minors um, themselves. So you can kind of see how whether you um, just use the word or you even put the asterisk on there, um, essentially what's happening is it's kind of increasing your search results because it's taking that word of child and that asterisk is telling it, well, hey, look for things that utilize child as well. So whether it's children or kind of, you know, childhood, it's kind of whatever's going to come after childhood or whatever's going to come after child is still going to show up. Um, then we also have uh, kind of quote marks or like your quotations starting out if you were doing something like tumor marker. So I suppose keeping with the vein of kind of health sciences research here. So tumor marker just as a word as uh, a phrase. So essentially what we're seeing is like 22,000 um, results. We're seeing things that specifically say tumor marker. Scrolling back up towards the top. Okay, so now we're going to apply our quotations. So essentially what the quotations are going to do is it's going to tell the database to essentially look for this phrase exactly as is. In some cases when we search for things, plugging in something that's maybe a phrase, what might end up happening um, is it might split those words up. So it might have, um, as you looked through the search results, split this up and, and looked for tumor um, as, you know, a keyword and marker as a keyword. So essentially by putting those quotations in there, 
we're telling it, keep those together. Um, it is really important for that phrase to be stuck together. Could even be the same with like, um, maybe like law enforcement. Um, would you, would it be helpful to your research on law enforcement if it separated those and it was looking for law and it was looking for enforcement, but it wasn't looking for law enforcement together. So those quotations can be quite helpful. So see, you can see we can, we pretty much halved it. So we went from like 22,000 search results down to 10,000. And you can kind of see yet again, like we're seeing things specifically on tumor markers, getting a lot of kind of that connection. That is also kind of a good way to kind of utilize your kind of search. Uh, and then finally, and this is one that maybe tends to show up a bit more in relation to the particular academic field. So that idea of a natural language versus a controlled vocabulary. Um, this tends to pop up a ton in like health sciences, anything really in relation to like medicine, um, you know, physical therapy, athletic training, nursing, really anything like that for sure. Um, so your natural langu language is really just like the way that someone speaks. The controlled vocabulary is literally kind of what uh, librarians do when they're cataloging. So it's kind of doing an index of like, what is the term going to be? Kind of, kind of the best uh, idea, you know, that comes up here is that idea of um, a heart attack. So natural language would say, heart attack. Um, that's what we would we would probably call it just off of the cuff. And searching for that, we're looking at like over a hundred thousand. Um, and you can already kind of see a bit of like the shortcut um, that we kind of have here going. So for I guess medical terminology is myocardial infarction. Um, so rather than using heart attack, even though you can see how kind of in the, the autocomplete that exists here, it's also gonna give you that as well. So it kind of shortcuts it for you. But um, myocardial infarction is gonna be a bit more of your like pre-indexed. Um, this is how it's cataloged. You're gonna see this in the medical terminology. So we went from 111,000. We'll see how this goes. 91,000, so it split it up a little bit, um, but you're going to kind of notice between that your search results are going to change, change based on kind of that terminology. So is it the natural language, what maybe everyone would say, regardless of if they um, kind of understand that, that academic field or that academic study versus what is the actual um, vocabulary used within the field, um, what is what would show up if something were being published about it. Um, and for every kind of academic field, it's going to be slightly different kind of how this might look, but um, this kind of gives you yet again like another tool.